give honor to our Heavenly Father, to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit, our keeper and guide. Amen. We give honor to uh, the leadership of this church and to all of you who are watching today by Facebook or YouTube. We just thank God for you. And we greet you this morning with Jesus' joy. Amen. 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 We do pray that you had a great Thanksgiving. His feet and ankle bones received strength. And he leaping up stood and walked and entered with them into the temple, walking and leaping and praising God. And all the people saw him walking and praising God. And they knew that it was he which sat for alms at the beautiful gate of the temple. And they were filled with wonder and amazement at that which had happened unto him. And as the lame man which was healed held Peter and John, all for who you are, you're worthy to be praised. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Verse, verse number one. Amen. It says that, and verse number two says, and a certain man lame from his mother's womb was carried, whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple, which is called Beautiful, to ask alms of them that entered into the temple. In his post-game interview, Coach Spurrier had a surprising message for Gamecock fans. He said, please don't clap if we get beat. Coach Spurrier was saying, if you celebrate losing, you can get comfortable there and it will hinder the desire to get better. So if we're going to build a culture of winning, if we're going to come out of the culture of losing we're stuck in, we can't get comfortable where we are. You, you, you do know that it is possible to get comfortable in a place where you're stuck. The prophet Jonah uh, is a prime example of this. You, you remember God told Jonah to go to Nineveh, but, but he went to Joppa and hopped a ship down to Tarshish. And when the ship got out to sea, it arose a great storm and the entire crew was afraid. But, but Jonah was down in the ship fast asleep. Uh, the, the, the captain came to Jonah and said, how can you sleep in the middle of a storm? But Jonah was able to sleep because he had got comfortable in the mess he was stuck in. You, you don't have to say anything, but, but this is somebody's word in here uh, uh, this morning. To, to, to many of us, too many of us are stuck in bad situations, uh, stuck in jacked up circumstances, stuck in a dilemma, stuck in a position, predicament, or problem simply because you have gotten comfortable where you are. Now, now, now here in, in the third chapter of Acts is where we find what, what many believe to be the first miracle performed by the apostles after the ascension of Jesus Christ. This miracle took place at the gate of the temple which is called Beautiful. The, the, the Jewish historian Josephus described the gate as being made of fine Corinthian brass. It stood 75 feet high with huge double doors. It was so beautiful that it greatly excelled those that were only covered over with silver and gold. Our, our text tells us that at this gate called Beautiful, that a certain man lame from his mother's womb is carried and laid at this gate daily to be. Now, now this man w was in a beautiful place, but he had an ugly problem. H have you ever been in a, in a beautiful place, but, but had an ugly problem? You, you finally got the house, got it all fixed up, but you're in an ugly financial situation. You finally got the job you wanted, but now there's some ugly confusion going on. You and Jim have finally gotten to where you can enjoy one another, but now you're sick. Have you ever been in a beautiful place, but stuck in an ugly problem? Now, now let's take a look at, at this text and, and see why uh, that this man is stuck at this gate. Now, now the most obvious reason he was stuck at the gate is is he was lame. Lame means his, his legs were inadequate. He, his legs were insufficient. His, his legs were incompetent. Is there any 
anybody listening who, who can relate to this lame man. Although you may not be lame in your legs, you're lame in another area of your life. You're lame in your finances and you're stuck in debt. You're lame in your health and you're stuck in sickness. You're lame in your social life and you're stuck in loneliness. Does anybody know what it's like to be lame and stuck? The text says, the text says he was lame from his mother's womb and they laid him at the gate daily. I, I believe that, that he, he was stuck at the gate because he had been in that condition so long, he had given up hope of getting delivered. He had accepted his circumstances. He had accepted his situation. He had said to himself, this is the way it's always going to be. What do you do when you've been in a situation so long, you've gotten used to it? When you've been in a situation so long, you've adjusted to it. When you've been in a situation so long, it's become a way of life. There may be somebody watching today who have been in a condition a long time. You've been broke so long. You've been unemployed so long. You've been lonely so long. You've been on drugs so long. But, but my brother, he would always order a Big Mac without cheese. And, and I would get mad because a Big Mac without cheese was a special order. And, and, and I was thinking, if you didn't want cheese, all you had to do was take the bun and take the cheese off the, bur off the burger. But because it was a special order, we had to pull over to the curb and wait. And... And, and somebody would walk it out to the car while everybody else who got their food passed us by. God told me to tell somebody watching this morning that the deliverance you've been praying for is a special order. Not because he has to prepare the deliverance for you, but because you've been in this condition so long, he has to prepare you for your deliverance. So he allowed you to be pulled over to the curb of life and watch everybody pass you by while he prepares you for your breakthrough. But I've got good news for somebody. It doesn't matter how long you've been in your condition. Jesus can still deliver you. Lazarus was in the grave four days and he delivered him. The woman with an issue of blood had her, her issue 12 years, but he delivered her. The man at the pool of Bethesda laid there 38 years and he delivered him. And if you put your faith in him, he'll deliver you too. He'll deliver you out of every bondage. He'll deliver you out of every trial. He'll deliver you out of every stronghold. Is there anybody listening right now that our God is a strong deliverer. Mm. Now, now this man, this man, this man was stuck at the gate because he stayed at the gate. This man was stuck at the gate simply because he stayed at the gate. He, he never made any effort to go any further than the gate. He, he was at the church, but he wasn't in the church. At the gate, he had, he had one foot in and one foot out. At the gate, he was in the world and in the church. You, you see, too many folk are still stuck in their mess because they won't make any effort to go further than church attendance. They won't go any further in their commitment. They, they won't go any further in the word. They won't go any further in their service. And, and, this, and, and so I'm reminded of a story about a little boy who kept falling out of bed. He, he, he would, at night, his mama would, would tuck him in the bed, and, and, and about two or three o'clock in the morning, he, you'd, he'd hear something go, boom, boom, boom. And he said, oh, mama, mama, I fell out of bed. And, and, so, and so mama would get up, and, and she would run in, get him up off the floor, and put him back in the bed. Next night, about three or four o'clock in the morning, boom, boom. Fell out of bed again. He's hollering, Mama, 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 I, f I fell out of bed. But Mama gets up out of the bed. She goes in. She picks him up. She fall, he, and she puts him back into the bed. And next night, 2, 3 o'clock in the morning, boom, he falls out of bed again. Mama, Mama, I fell out of the bed. I fell out of bed. Mama gets up. She goes in, and she, she puts him in the bed, and she tucks him back in. And, and, and while Mama was tucking him in, he, he, said, he said, Mama, Mama, I fell, why do I keep falling out of the bed? He said, Mama, I'm so tired of falling out of the bed. Why, why do I keep falling out of the bed? And Mama said, Son, 
that simple. You never got far enough in. You see, see, that's why we have so many folks who are in the church one minute and out of the church the next minute, in the word one minute, out of the word the next minute, committed to the kingdom one minute, out of the kingdom the next minute, uh, because they, they won't get far enough in. You see, the Bible teaches us we have to get all the way into Jesus. In, the Bible says, in him we live, in him we move, in him we have our being. The old folks used to say, you need to be wrapped up, tied up, tied Tangled up in Jesus. If you get all the way into Jesus, you'll be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. Good God, you ought to encourage yourself right now and say, get all the way in. Now, 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 now that, that we know how, how the man got stuck at the gate, let, let's see what he did to get out of the ugly situation he found himself stuck in. The text says, as Peter and John went into the temple, the man asked them of alms. Peter told him, look on us. The, the, the first, uh, uh, the, he, he, he had to, 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 to uh, come out of the, the first thing he had to do to come out of the situation that he was stuck in, he had to look up. Too many times we tend to focus on our problems instead of the problem solver. We tend to focus on our mountain instead of the mountain mover. We tend to focus on our situation instead of focusing on the Savior. You remember, you remember, you remember Peter and the disciples. Uh, the Bible said one time they were out at sea and, and a great storm arose and, and, the, and, the, and the boat began uh, to be tossed and turned uh, in the storm. And, and the Bible says uh, uh, that, that, uh, that, that they feared uh, that they were going to perish. And the Bible says it was then uh, that Jesus uh, came walking to them on the water. And when Jesus came walking to them uh, on the water, it was Peter who stood up uh, and looked and said, uh, uh, Master, if it be you, bid me to come. And, and the Lord gave him one word, come. And the Bible says Peter stepped out of the boat and he began to walk on the water. He began to make progress on the water. He was making his way to Jesus on the water. But, but then the text says the wind got boisterous and it began to blow his garment. And, and, and he took his eyes off Jesus and began to look down at, at his garment, which, which represented his troubles. And, 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 and so when he did that, the Bible says that Peter began to sink. Mm. He, he, he began to sing. And, and so when, but, and he began to sing. And then he reached his hand up and looked toward Jesus and said, Master, save me. Jesus reached down and grabbed his hand and, 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 and pulled him up. Uh, but, 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 but I don't know about you, uh, but, but we need to understand that many times uh, we, we're sinking because we've taken our eyes off of Jesus. Many times we've taken our eyes off our troubles, uh, off Jesus, and put our eyes on our troubles. Uh, I don't know about you, uh, but I'm going to look to the hills from which cometh my help. The Bible says, lift up your heads, O ye gates, and be ye lifted up, ye everlasting doors, and the king of glory shall come in. Good God, you need to encourage yourself and just say, self, look up. Now, now the text says, the text says that the man gave heed unto them expecting to receive something of them. Hmm. So, so, so the next thing the man did to come out of his situation, he was stuck in, he expected to receive something. He expected to receive something. How, how many of us come to church Sunday after Sunday? How many of uh, us tune in to church Sunday after Sunday? Revival after revival, not expecting to receive anything from the Lord. Just in a routine, just, just, just expecting to come. But, 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 but you remember Jesus, Jesus was, was at a wedding one day. And, and the Bible says at the wedding uh, that they ran out of wine. And, 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 and Mary, Jesus' mother, came to him and said, said, said they have run out of wine. And, and Jesus said, what, what, in other words, what, what that got to do with me? This ain't my wedding. I ain't getting married. <laughs> and, but then Mary turns to the servants and says, whatever he says, do it. Hmm. Now, 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 that confused me because, because
because Jesus didn't say he was going to do anything. But, but she told the servants, whatever he tell you to do, do it. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and so, 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 so uh, she didn't know what he was going to do. But she knew he was going to do something. Mm. You see, regardless of the situation you find yourself in, this is the type of relationship you ought to have with Jesus. You don't know what he's going to do, but you ought to expect him to do something. I don't know how he's going to fix it, but I expect him to do something. I don't know how he's going to make it better, but I expect him to do something. I don't know how he's going to make it right, but I expect him to do something. If the check don't come, I expect him to do something. If the job closes down, I expect him to do something. If the doctor says he's done all he can do, I expect him to do something. Good God, I don't know about you, but regardless of the situation I'm in, I'm expecting Jesus to do something. I read somewhere where, we, where we've never seen the righteous forsaken or his seed begging bread because we serve a God when we in any situation, he's going to do something. Now Peter, Peter then took the man by the hand and lifted him up. And so the next thing the man had to do to get out of that situation he was stuck in was simply get up. It, it, it's not just enough to look up. It, it's not just enough to expect something. But if you're going to come out of the situation you're stuck in, you have to make up your mind you're going to get up. The book, of, the book of Proverbs says, a just man falls seven times and rises up again. Good God, who am I preaching to this morning? You've got to get up. Get up out of discouragement. Get up out of disappointment. Get up out of despair. Get up out of defeat. You've got to make up your mind that if God is who he say he is and I'm his child, I'm going to get up and seek what he has for me. Good God, you ought to tell yourself, self, it's time to get up. Now, 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 the man went into the temple. This is what the text says. The man went into the temple walking, leaping, and praising God. He, he, he went in walking, leaping, and praising God. Oh, my God. I, I, I love this. He, he, he went into the temple walking and leaping and praising God. He, he he got his breakthrough. He 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 got he 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 he's been sitting there for years, and finally the breakthrough he was looking for has come through. He's up out of his stuck position, and the Bible says when he went into the temple, he went in walking, leaping, and praising God. Good God. Too many of us, when God bless us, we act like that he owed us something. But if you really know that God has done something for you, you ought to be thankful and understand that he didn't have to do it, but you so glad he did. And give him all the praise and all the glory. You know he's worthy of the praise simply because he woke you up this morning. If you got up this morning, you ought to tell him thank you. If you was able to get up, you ought to tell him thank you. If you wasn't able to get up and somebody else had to get you up, you ought to tell him thank you because at least you woke up. If God has done anything for you, you ought to be just like this man. You ought to be leaping and praising God. Now, the text says, text says that the people saw him and knew it was him. And they were filled with wonder and amazement. The, the, the people saw him. They knew it was him. And, and they were filled with wonder and amazement. Now, now, now this pu puzzled me because the people who saw him were the people in the church. It, it, it was church folk because he came into the temple. Mm -hmm. He came in. Praise the Lord. And, and the people who saw him, they, they knew it was him. And they, they were amazed and, and, and filled with wonder because it was him. In, in other words, they were shocked that he came out of the situation he was stuck in. Mm, mm, mm. 
How, how many of y'all know uh, that, 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 that many times folk will look at you and say they, they, they will give up on you. They, they, they will throw in the towel on you. They, they, they'll say you never amount to anything. Uh, they, they, they believe that you won't come out of what you're stuck in. Uh, but, but how many of y'all know that we serve a God who's able to do wonders? Uh, he's looking for somebody ordinary right now to do something extraordinary through. Uh, that's what God does. He takes ordinary people and does extraordinary things. Uh, 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 you you know what? You know what? You ought to let some folk know. Don't laugh too soon. Don't give up on me too soon. Don't throw in the towel too soon because the situation I'm in is not a permanent situation. I'm going on my way to my destination. You ought to thank God that he's able to pick you up and turn you around. Place your feet on solid ground. I heard the old folks say he'll take your feet out the miry clay and place them on a rock to stay. Don't you get stuck in any situation. As long as Jesus is on the throne, as long as Jesus has all power, as long as Jesus is still answering prayers, you ought to know that whatever you're stuck in, you're able to come out of it. You ought to say to yourself right now, self, I refuse to stay stuck. I'm getting up from where I am. I'm getting up and I'm going forward. I'm pressing on unto the mark of the high calling in Jesus Christ. Is there anybody listening who is stuck in any kind of situation willing to get up and go on to your destiny? Because we serve a God who's able to do anything but fail. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We thank you today. We thank you. We thank you that you tuned in. And I pray that the word, that this word from God met you at the point of your need. I pray that, that if there's somebody who's listening who, who feels stuck in any situation, whether it be a bad relationship, debt, or illness, know that we have a God who can bring you out. And usually at this time we just do a, a, a prayer and for everybody, but 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 at this point right now, I want to pray for somebody who's feeling stuck. That feels like they have no way out. Feels like you you have no other alternative but to stay where you are. I want to pray for you this morning. Let us bow our heads. Heavenly Father, we come right now. Lord God, we thank you because we know that you have all power in your hand. Lord God, we thank you. Because we understand that regardless of what it looks like around us, we know that you're still in control. Right now, God, we're coming to you right now, asking you, first of all, forgive us of all our sins. Anything we've done that wasn't pleasing in your sight, forgive us right now in the name of Jesus. Lord God, we ask that you would cast it far as the east is from the west. Look on our hearts. Clean it up, God, in the name of Jesus. Lord God, we want to ask right now that there be somebody who's listening, God, who's stuck in a situation that they feel that they can't get out of. We can ask right now, God, that you, would, that you would touch them right where they are, that they will feel your presence right where they are, that they would feel your presence and understand and, and take this uh, as a sign that it's time to get up and time to move on. Lord God, we ask right now that you would take them by their hand, that you would lead and guide them, oh God, that you would open doors right now that no man could shut, that you would, that you would give them favor, oh God, in places uh, with, with, with man that they need favor, oh God, whether it be a person in, in, in HR, that they touch them right now, that somebody who's stuck in unemployment that, that needs a job, give them the favor right now with that HR rep. Oh God, there may be somebody stuck in an illness, oh God. We ask right now that you would touch their body. We know that you still have more, more healing in the hem of your garment than in the CVS across this land. Lord God, touch them right now where they are. Lord God, we just simply thank you for who you are. Lord God, we ask right now that you, get, you bless this church in a mighty way. Lord God, we ask that you bless this country. We ask that you would bring us back together, oh God. Bring this, take out division and bring unity across this nation. Lord God, we just simply thank you and we praise you. We thank you for who you are and we thank you for what you're going to do. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. We just simply thank God for, for each one of you this morning. Amen. We, we ask that you don't stop praying. Amen. Continue to pray and watch God move. It's been a pleasure 
being with you again. Until next time, God bless. Thank you.